Hi everybody, it's Gemma, welcome back to Pampered Wolf and welcome to Foundation Friday where today we are testing out I think the most affordable foundation I have ever reviewed on my channel. This is from Essence and it is their Pretty Natural Hydrating Foundation and I am super excited to share my thoughts and feelings with you about this foundation. It's five pounds, five quid. So all it's going to set you back. Let's do a little bit of bump on this and we'll get some on my face. So this is the Essence Pretty Hydrating Foundation. It's £4.99 in the UK. £4.99 and you get the standard 30 mils. Now this has 31 different shades to choose from and although I haven't swatched every single shade, I don't have them all in front of me. From the website images, it does look like the shade range is pretty diverse, so I'm pleased about that. Now, this is supposed to give light to medium coverage with a natural matte finish, and it's supposed to be quite long-lasting. They say up to 24 hours. Really annoys me when brands do that, up to 24 hours. What does that mean? Does that mean that one person has worn this for 24 hours and it looked good and the other hundred wore it for three and it looked okay? I mean, I really don't know, but it does say it's supposed to be quite long lasting. So we are gonna test that out today as well. This is infused with hyaluronic acid and also aloe vera to hydrate and soothe the skin. And it's supposed to be free of oil, free of alcohol, free of gluten, parabens and preservatives. It's also cruelty free and vegan. So let's get some of this on. Okay, so as per usual, I already have all of my skincare on my skin. I've given that plenty of time. Today it was around about 15 minutes to sink into the skin before I'm applying the foundation. Now let's just have a look at the swatches of the shades that I've managed to pick up. I've missed out shade 030 and I'm not quite sure why. I bought these quite a long time ago. I've got a feeling that they didn't have 030 in stock when I bought these. <laughs> I've also got a feeling that 030 will be my perfect match. Sod's Law will say that that will be the case. So let's just have a look at the shade swatches on my arm and then we'll have a look at shade swatches on my face. So from left to right, we've got 020, which is neutral alabaster. We've then got 040, which is neutral vanilla. And then 050, which is neutral champagne. Like I've said, 030 will probably be my perfect match. Let's have a look at these on the skin. So this is 020, which is neutral alabaster. Really quite a good shade match for my neck, but my neck is naturally a lot paler than the skin on my face. So let's have a look at 040, which is uh, neutral vanilla. Again, this is blending into my neck quite nicely. And this is 050, which is neutral champagne. Again, I think I could probably make that work if need be. I think 050 would probably be more my mum's shade. I'm gonna go in the middle at 040. Okay, so I've just cleaned that off my face so we've got a fresh canvas. This is a really nice squeezy tube bottle and it's very, very easy to use, very travel friendly, very much the same as the NYX Born to Glow foundation tube, but the end hole where the product comes out of is a lot smaller than the hole in the NYX Born to Glow foundation. I always find like you get way too much out of the NYX Born to Glow foundation. This, not so much. It's a lot easier to dispense without getting too much all over the place. So I've just applied some to the back of my hand and it's already moving around. So it's definitely that sort of medium consistency foundation where you can put it on the back of your hand, it will spread, but when you tilt your hand, it will make its way down the back of the hand, but extremely slowly. So it's not super, super liquidy and thin. I'm gonna apply this half with a brush, this half with a sponge as per usual. So let's get on with it. So the shade that I've chosen is 040. 
And you know, that's not too bad. I'm actually quite glad that I didn't pick up 030. I've still no idea why I didn't do that. I mean, it must have been that they didn't have it in stock because why would I not? Why would, <laughs> why would I not? Yeah, that's a really good shade match for me, unless it seriously oxidizes and then we might have some issues. But yeah, at the moment, that is pretty decent. This is going on really nice. The consistency is really, really nice. And this does say on the bottle that it does have perfume in it. So it is fragrance, but I mean, you have to get really, really up close to smell the fragrance in this. It's not overpowering at all. I am really liking applying this with a brush. Very, very simple, very smooth application. At the moment, it's not grabbing onto any of my dry areas at all. And it's drying down quite fast. So it goes on and it's quite luminous and then it dries down to quite a natural matte finish. Let's do the other side with a sponge. So this is going on really nicely with a sponge, obviously less coverage with a sponge. So again, I like both sides of this. I don't think there's a massive difference in application, whether you use a brush or whether you use a sponge. So it's just down to personal preference. With regards to coverage, I don't think there's masses of difference. So um, it definitely hasn't sunk into any of my dryness and I have considerable dryness around this area of my skin. And yeah, you just, you just can't notice it. It's just glided over the top and blended really, really nicely. Look at that, covered every single bit of discoloration up, no problems whatsoever. This is one layer of the foundation. And yes, you can still see freckles, a little bit of my imperfections coming through there, a little bit of the acne scarring still coming through there. But I mean, I do like the level of coverage. I really do. Interesting. I'm gonna go and put all the rest of my products on and I'll be right back. So this is the final look. I absolutely love it. Very, very simple, but sleek. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments section below. I'm gonna show you this in natural lighting because at the moment I am extremely impressed. All the rest of my products glided on top of this effortlessly blended out, completely effortlessly, and it feels very lightweight on the skin. Just a little added note. I haven't felt the need to powder this in place. This is touch dry, it's not going anywhere. So I haven't even powdered the tip of my chin or on my forehead, which are the areas that I tend to get a little bit oilier throughout the day. So thought I'd better update you on that because this dried down really, really quickly and feels very comfortable on the skin. There is no tacky feeling on the skin whatsoever. So let's look at this in natural lighting so you can make up your own mind. So this hasn't sat into any fine lines, any wrinkles. For me, the most important thing is that this hasn't sat into any of my dryness whatsoever. And like I said before, my dryness, especially around my chin area is considerable at the moment. I do feel like this has slightly airbrushed my pores, but when I say that, I mean only slightly. This is not one of those foundations that's gonna completely wipe out every single last imperfection on the skin and blur everything. But I do feel like my pores are less prominent on my skin, probably due to that really soft matte finish. So what do you think? I mean, I think it looks really, really nice on my skin. There are no complaints here. I'm really impressed with it at the moment, but it hasn't been on for very long. So I'm gonna get on with the rest of my day. I'm gonna see how this wears throughout the day. I'm gonna try and leave it as long as possible before I do a check-in because this does claim to be quite long wearing. So we're gonna test that out today. I'm gonna go downstairs and sort my kids out and uh, I will see you all in a little bit. 
Hello, welcome back to the check-in. It's now been over 10 hours since I've had this foundation on my face and to be quite honest, I am shocked. The name Natural Hydrating Foundation tends to make me think of foundations that are dewy or radiant and this wasn't those things to start off with. It was a soft matte and a hydrating foundation usually goes super dewy throughout the day and this really hasn't done that. Yes, it's glowier than it was when I first put it on, but it's definitely not broken down in any areas. And from a distance, this still looks absolutely flawless. And I am being picky when we get up close. So this looks a little bit heavier and less skin-like than I usually go for. A tiny bit, a tiny, tiny bit has rubbed off on my chin. It's rubbed off around where I've had my glasses on throughout the day, but I didn't prep that area for me wearing glasses, so I only have myself to blame. This foundation, however, hasn't sat in any of my fine lines. It hasn't sat in any of my wrinkles. The side where I applied the foundation with a sponge has gone a little speckly on the side of my nose and it sat around my pores rather than going over my pores. This didn't happen on the side that I applied with a brush. So in future, I will apply this with a brush or I'll just take a little bit more care when I'm applying with a sponge around my nose area. This definitely doesn't look dry. It hasn't set into any of my dryness. It hasn't clung onto any of my dryness and it hasn't felt dry or tight throughout the day. It definitely has looked heavier than my usual foundations that I would usually go for, but I've really, really enjoyed wearing it. I wouldn't suggest that this is super, super lightweight, but I definitely wouldn't say this was a heavy feel foundation either. I would say this is suitable for all skin types, which is very, very difficult to come up with a formula that suits absolutely everybody. Obviously, if you have a really oily skin, you are going to have to powder this in place, possibly use a setting spray as well. But if you remember, I have dry skin and I did not powder this in place at all. So the bit that's disappeared on the end of my chin may have been prevented if I'd worn a little bit of powder on that area. So that's definitely what I will do in the future when I wear this foundation. It has possibly slightly oxidized, but you can hardly tell. I don't think this is massively oxidized and I would probably pick this foundation shade again, which is the 040, rather than buying the 030. Although for five pounds, I mean, I may go and buy the 030 and see if it's an absolute perfect match for me. I definitely think it's worth going out and trying it because I mean, even if you absolutely hate it, at the end of the day, it's five pounds. So the price to pay is low. And if you love it, bonus. <laughs> For five pounds, it's absolutely amazing. Does it feel really glamorous? Does it feel really luxurious on my skin? No. Do I like it? Yes. And it's five pounds. I, I just don't think you can complain at that. I really, really hope you've enjoyed this video. Do let me know what you thought about it in the comment section, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye, everyone.